G'day. I'm going to tell you guys a throwback Thursday because it's locked down and because they're fun and they're easy for me to do. I have told this one before, but it was a long time ago. Right, we first of all got to go up to the top of the North Island. Back in the 80s, I was travelling around in an Austin J4 van with my girlfriend Diane, having the time of our lives. On the roof, we had surfboards and fishing rods and some spares for spearing eel. And I had a chainsaw because I was doing some work for a farmer, occasionally up there doing a bit of scrub cutting. And lots of fun was happening because we were young and free and moving around. And this day, we were heading towards Te Pura Pura Bay, which is right at the top of the North Island New Zealand around Cape Reinga. That's where the spirits, the Māori spirits, would jump off going into the next life, I think. So we're up there and we're cruising along and I see this turkey on the side of the road. I said to my girlfriend, turkey? Man, the last time I ate turkey was Christmas time with my family, when we were a family, back when I was like 10 years of age. That was the last day we were a family together because mum and dad broke up and that was the end of that family. But that was the last time, so here I am now, eight years later, and there's a turkey presenting itself. Now, there's a bit of traffic, but not much. The occasional truck or the occasional tourist bus or the odd farmer, but not many people. And a turkey was on the other side of the road. There was actually a number of turkeys, but I had spotted this gobbler. Gobbler or cock? What do you call a male turkey? A cock? That's a rooster, isn't it? I can't use the word cock. It was like, you know, <laughs> gobbler. Got that thing that does that. No, the thing's there, isn't it? Where is it? There or there? Or is it both? I forget. Anyway, all that aside, I'll get my magnum out of the out of the vehicle and put one up the spout. It had no scope, open sights, and it was my first rifle, and I just only got my firearms license. There's a little, little bit of a noise of a vehicle coming in the background like a truck. I thought, I'll let that pass, and then I'll take a shot at it. So along came this old truck with some hay on it. It was haymaking time of the year. And then I parked up, and I was just getting ready to squeeze off. Right, park that up, that part of the story, just for a moment before what happens next. Because <laughs> what happens next is really, really crazy. Park that up for a minute. Let's go back to how I got my firearms license in Kaitaia. So we're talking six weeks earlier. I rocked into the police station. There was a big, huge, huge, fat, mouldy uh, policeman with a big pukanui, and he was sitting there reading a magazine. And I walked in, and I thought he must have been deaf because he hadn't even noticed me. I walked in, and I went, <clears throat> he's like reading his paper, and he like looks up, looks back down. I said, uh, hello. He's like, yeah, bro. And I said, oh, I want to get my firearms license. He goes, read that. And I said, oh. I can't really read very well because back then I've only really learnt to read properly since because I was very dyslexic when I was younger. <laughs> He's like, well, you need to read it. And I said, oh, can you help me? He goes, yeah, okay. So we sit down at this little round table and he, he's got this chair. He's so big, he hardly fits on it. And I'm beside him. I'm like a skinny little white-ass boy in this crap. Must have looked funny in the room. And I remember his breath smelt like, oh, it smelt like, um, what can I describe it as? Fish mixed with mutton, and it was like, bro, you need to clean your teeth. But he was a policeman, and I was a young guy wanting to get my firearms license. So we go into this thing where he asked me a question and stuff, and did I know it? Then he tells me all the stuff, the code, and this is like all in like five minutes. The firearms license, the code is very, very complex. It's a lot of reading today. Back then, it was a lot easier. And then we go out the back, and there's a fence, and I've got a put the firearm over the fence, and back then, the thing about holding your firearm was you had to point towards the ground. The law has changed since then. It now says you've got to point it in a safe direction. So you always point your firearm at the ground. That's gone out the window. So I did all these things, went back inside, and then he said, oh, we're going to test you now. That's how easy it was. So we're sitting back, and we did these questions and these answers, and I can't remember how many it was, but what I can remember was the ones I didn't know he kind of helped me with. He would like, uh, well, you didn't really mean to say that. What you meant to say was this. And I'd go, oh, yeah, yeah. And, oh, you meant to tick that box, didn't you? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reason he sped it up was because he didn't want me to come back and he wanted to eat his lunch. So I got raced through that there. Should never, ever have got my firearms license. Should never have got it. Shouldn't have happened. <laughs> back in those days, it was like that. So let's go forward now to me and the turkey across the road. So I'm waiting to get a, a bit of clearness in the traffic and I could hear again the rumbling it sounded like another truck miles and miles away and I thought oh look it sounds like it's real slow I'll take the shot and then I'll get it so 
got me Megan, put one up the spare, aiming at this gobbler. Pew! Beautiful headshot. I was going for the head because I didn't want to wreck the body. Smack this thing straight away dead, just dead as a dino. Right, straight down, dead. At least I thought it was dead. I go running across the road, leave my rifle with my girlfriend at the J4 van, running across the road, get across there. And as I get across, I can hear this thing getting closer, this vehicle. It's actually a bus. So I'm getting closer. It was actually a bus full of tourists. I'm running closer and I get my get my turkey and I pick it up, getting ready to go back. And just so I can go back, this fucking thing comes alive. I'd only like skim the top of its head. And this thing's coming alive. And I've got one leg and then it's like the other leg's going. <laughs> I'm getting scratched and really scratched bad. And all I've got is my shorts because it's summertime. It's haymaking time and I've got a, got a singlet and I'm getting scratched, literally getting my... My singlet scratched and, and, and right through to my skin and it's fucking sore. So I think I'll grab its head and I'll break its neck. So I grab its head and then I do the dumbest thing is I'll let go the other foot. Now I've got the head, now it's got two fucking legs and it's going like this. And oh, <laughs> it was not funny. It's funny now when you hear it, but it wasn't funny because I was getting scratched a fuck. I had like cuts and it was bleeding and this thing was getting, it was out of control and by now this bus has pulled up right beside on the side of the road and a whole lot of Japanese tourists are getting out with their Nikons and their Sunny cameras and their Panasonics. Oh, is that Japanese? I don't know. But anyway, they're taking all these photos and it was like terrible. I couldn't control this thing. And again, was another bus, this time the bus driver, he looked like the same policeman. He was a huge, big Maori guy. He was, but he was this guy was in shape. He was like cut. He was massive and he had big muscles and I can remember his white shirt and he had the logo of the bus company on his pristine white shirt and his big shoulders like this and all I could see was this big guy with his head back and his shoulders going like this because he was fucking laughing at me and his head was back and I could see him laughing and I'm trying to control this fucking turkey that's oh, 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 scratch the fuck out of me and I was like come on man I'm trying to break this neck and it won't break and I'm getting scratched on the legs and I'm just it's just horrific you never think a turkey could do so much so much damage. Now, if I had been smart, I would have grabbed both its legs and controlled it straight away. I would have grabbed both its legs, I would have stood on its head, and I would have broke its neck. I would have pulled up. But I was a dumb 18-year-old that never had a fight with a turkey in his life. I do remember my dad calling me a turkey strangler and a soap waster. But that's another story for another day when I was younger anyway. So, I'm there with this turkey and it's scratching the fuck out of me. And I said to my girlfriend, Diane, bring the knife, bring the knife. Because I figured I could cut its throat. So I've got it, and I'm like out of breath, and I'm actually getting tired. It's ridiculous, and everyone's taking photos, and some people are going, oh, and other people are laughing, and the Māori guy's just like, I can still cracking up looking at me, and she comes running over, and she gives me one of those knives that's got like a little thing for taking stones out of horses' hooves, a screwdriver, a little red knife. What are they called? I forget the name. A little Phillips screwdriver. They've got a bigger knife and a smaller blade. A Swiss Army knife. That's it. And I pull open it and it was as blunt as a piece of wood. I would have cut better with my finger. So I've got this neck, I'm holding one, I'm still getting scratched, still getting scratched, I'm like cutting through this neck and nothing's happening at all. It's blunt as fuck. Nothing happens. So then I'm like, now I'm trying to like, you imagine trying to hold a turkey and open a blade how hard that is. So now I'm going for the, the one that's a saw and I've got this turkey and it's still scratching the hell out of me and I'll get the saw open. And so the saw, yeah, the saw did it in three seconds. Turn it around. Shh, cut. Fuck. And I was exhausted. I had a scratch right down my face, a real beauty. I had down both sides, I had one gun just dangerously close to my nuts. And I stood up and I also realised that I had now lice on me as well. So I start walking back to the bus. Finally, when it's dead, all the Japanese like, ah, all clapping, like, well done. And the married guy still just laughing, like shaking his head, like looking down. And I had to walk past someone to get up there. They didn't know that I'd shot it and the rifle was in. The the van so they must have thought I must have gone out to, to wrestle it so thank god for that because I might have gotten into trouble for shooting in a public place and this all this Murray guy goes when he go past him was he goes bro shaking his head and all the Japanese people were smiling and getting photos of me with a fucking turkey and I'm covered in would have been a great photo I wish I'd had one I didn't have a camera back then but it would have been a great photo for the story because I was just shredded I was literally shredded so we get it back to our camp and the worst thing about it was this fucking turkey. It was covered in lice, absolutely covered. And I had lice on me, and and I wasn't a great cook back then. I was all right. I'd been cooking for a while, and I plucked it. It was tough as fuck. I put it in hot water and I plucked it. 
we cooked it up in our camp camp oven in on the, the fire and it was so fucking tough when we'd finished it that I put it back into the camp another, another day and I put it in in water with some garlic and I cooked it slow for another whole day and only then we could chew it. It was actually quite tasty with salt and garlic and a bit of celery. That was the throwback story of the turkey strangler. <laughs> Sorry, I just I can... I just remembered how it was and how fucking silly it must have looked. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy that. That's just because we're in lockdown, something to keep you amused. I'll do more of these because I can. Hope you did enjoy it. Smash the like button if you're still watching so I know I've got something right. And be good. If you can't be good, be careful because I wasn't careful that day. See you later. I'm in my bedroom and Pace is just down here looking asleep on my, my top. Check it out. He's my inside dog now because he's me mate. And he's on my top and he's made it completely covered in white hairs. It's a beautiful day. We're going to go and tear into the garden because there's not much else we can do. See you later.